Two weeks ago, we launched a brand new segment here on Cabo Bay in LA in collaboration with the McLeod team talking about the real estate buzz, kung ano po ang pinakabago sa real estate. This time, uh, Mia McLeod talks about the different kinds of sales, from standard to short sale to foreclosures. Let's listen in. This real estate buzz segment is brought to you by McLeod & Associates, a full-service real estate and mortgage firm. It's not about the number of homes we sell, but the difference we make in people's lives. So, Mia, you know, you look young, and um, people might be thinking, you know, what does she know about real estate? And there are realtors out there that, you know, are older. They mm -hmm. think that perhaps they're more experienced. Talk to us a little bit about your experience as a realtor. Okay, well, actually, you know, I got into the industry at 22. I opened up McLeod & Associates at 22, so we're actually celebrating our eight-year anniversary as a business. Congratulations. Thank you. With 55 uh, real estate agents under us, and I work with five different members on my team. Nice. So, you know, I think the best kind of experience has really been something like what I've gone through at 22, uh -huh. uh, crunch time, eight years, dealing with this 24 hours a day versus, you know, veteran agents which are great uh, some have been maybe even in the industry for 30 years mm -hmm. or so but, but doing it part-time but doing it part-time yes, versus yes. full-time like this along with the team and along with managing 55 agents you can see the learning curve for someone like myself is overnight right but you know it's not only that um, I've heard you uh, answer questions earlier the way you explain things yeah. very very simple yeah. and you want that from your realtor because you need to understand the process that you're going through this exactly. is not an easy thing this is a, a big life decision to buy a property to buy a house exactly. now um, the last time we spoke about um, pre-approval yes so after you get your pre-approval what are the next steps well, I love this because the next step is actually one of my favorite parts of the whole process. Which is? The touring process, okay. going out into the open market and seeing these beautiful homes. But mm -hmm. you definitely have to take care of that pre-approval. And a lot of the clients, you know, they want to rush to the touring process, but they understand after going through it why it's so important. So after all that's done, we sit down with our client. We tell them what they can expect once we hit the market, mm -hmm. what kind of market trends are out there. We try to get what their parameters are, what kind of how they're looking for if they're starting a family is a school district important what kind of square footage they're looking for are they looking for an older home or a newer home and if that's the case are they okay with HOA or Mellow Roos so we explain all of that and not only that but we try to set the expectation on what kind of sales they're gonna see out there right, once right. we hit the market yeah, yeah let's talk about that there are three types of sales right now yes the uh, standard short sales and foreclosures, foreclosures. that's right can you differentiate each and every one Yes. You know, right now, the three main types of sales, which is what you mentioned out there in the open market for our clients, again, are the standard sales. So that's an equity seller, meaning the seller either walks away from the sale with a profit or at the very least without having to out of pocket any money. Mm -hmm. uh, the second type is a short sale. The homeowner is underwater. Uh, they probably owe more on their loan than the house is worth. And then the last type of sale is a foreclosure, a bank owned property. In that case, for example, if you like a property that's a bank-owned foreclosure, you'll be dealing directly with them as a buyer versus mm -hmm. a regular seller or homeowner. It sounds so complicated, and I think that's why you need somebody like Mia yeah. and her agents to help us because, you know, it, there's so many things involved. And obviously, mm -hmm. if you're going through this, um, mm -hmm. and you not like you, you've been in the industry for mm -hmm. eight years, so mm -hmm. you know the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. for somebody like myself, perhaps, you know, I wouldn't know. Yes. So you need a team mm -hmm. working, helping mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. What are the entities? Who are the entities involved in buying okay. a property? You know, this is another uh, great question you're asking because I think there's a big misconception. I don't truly feel buyers and sellers understand how complex the transaction is. It's not as simple as let me find a house, put the down payment, and then close it up. Right. You know, it's really, there's a lot of people involved. Uh, in one given transaction, you can expect maybe 20 plus people to wow. have a hand in that. Wow. And maybe several different entities. Do the sellers and buyers have to talk to all those or? Well, that's why you have a realtor, okay. you know, and, and that's why it's so important because you want someone you know protecting you backing you up if something happens you have an escrow company that's involved they are a third neutral party and they make sure that the terms of the agreement are fulfilled mm -hmm. then you have a title company they make sure that when title transfers over to the new homeowner that any liens or clouds or issues that were on 
title prior are cleaned up mm -hmm. and don't transfer along the transaction. Then you have a lender, the one who's lending you the loan. And within that entity alone, you've got several people involved, from the underwriter, the account manager, the funder, right. the one locking in your interest rate. And then, of course, you've got the appraiser who you know gives you a full report on the actual value of the property. And then your home inspector that does a full analysis of the current property condition. So you can imagine so all of complex. these. If you don't have a realtor, you yeah. don't know who's responsible for what role and what you know what responsibilities they have. So. Exactly. And so my next question is: I hear this C word being thrown around a lot in real estate transactions, yeah. and that is commission. commission. Who pays the commission? Okay, majority of the time, seller pays the commission, okay. and that is pre-negotiated before that property has even hit the open market. Okay. Yeah. So and the, the realtor will guide you through that as well. Yeah, and and the listing agent in that particular case case who um, listed that property for sale would have already negotiated the commission with the seller before who, it goes up. Who takes care of the closing costs? You know, the closing costs are technically the buyer's uh, responsibility. Mm -hmm. However, there are ways that buyers can get assistance and one of those ways can be, you know, maybe before a contract is accepted or a buyer's offer is accepted, they can request the seller to contribute to the, the buyer's cost. Right, right. Just know that per lending guidelines, they only allow the seller to contribute up to three percent of the purchase price so anywhere from a hundred dollars to three percent of whatever that purchase price is the seller can contribute if, if agreeable sounds good yeah. you know um, I'm looking forward to the future mm -hmm. segments here on Cabo Bay in LA of the real estate bus for now thank you so much and more power to you thank you all right happy closing thank you <laughs>